Nice mix and match for what may be the final game. GE Tigers versus SK Telecom T1. SKT back on red side again, of course. Who's that Lulu band? Going to just be banned all night. Uh, GE, it's very surprising that they're the ones banning the Lulu too, because that has been a priority pick. GE, the team that invented the Juggernaut composition, that does rely on this Lulu, and there's the Gragas once again, so not diverting in terms of their picks and bans either team. Yeah. Maokai ban against Marin. I think that's obviously a good one to have. Well, that's really interesting. They may try and first pick the Gnar then. I know. They, well, no, they wouldn't possibly, but I mean, uh, the thing is, is that if they do first pick the Gnar, then yeah, Maokai is the only really I'm wondering Usually if this is a dangerous option for I wonder if this means that Hecarim is coming out. Uh, GE may try and mix it up with a Smite Jungler and a Lane Swap. Oh, they first picked the Nar though. There we go. All right, well, Marn's going to be perfectly happy on that Rumble and on the Sejuani. Scary stuff already from SK Telecom. It's really interesting that they would first pick Nar and ban Maokai because Perfect. generally you, you think of Nar into Maokai as a winning matchup. But again, Marin is. 13 and 1 all time on that guy. Yeah, so there's that lose there's that, that aspect as well. SK Telecom will take the Urgot that is more than likely going to bang. Taking the Azir away from Easy Umkuro played it game one, gonna play it game three as well. Alright, so Siver and Azir. These have been some all three of these picks have been a little bit contested over the course of this series, and now GE gets all of them. So how will SKT respond? They've been excellent. I think they're just gonna go for Vlad here. I think they're gonna go Cassiopeia or Vlad. Um, maybe Cassiopeia would be a better lane matchup for the Azir, because you, it worked you would have some hard work. times early on. They could go for the Ziggs as well, Easy Hoon. Oh boy. Thinking about it, that's the face of a man that might pick Ziggs. It's very interesting, too, to see how SK Telecom, Easy Hoon and Faker really don't actually have too much champion pool crossover. Yeah, Easy Hoon has been good on champions that Faker has been a little bit iffy on, like uh, Cassiopeia and Azir. And we've also, we know he's the better Zerith player and the better Ziggs player also. So they, they have a lot of strategic flexibility just by swapping out their mid laners. Right, I mean, even if GE wins this game and kind of ke can keep the series going, I think then we're gonna see Faker and then we're gonna see a whole new pool of champions that GE has to deal with. Yeah, it's that's, just that's when SKT stops banning LeBlanc and then yep. it really drastically changes the pick and ban phase here. Definitely. Oh, maybe a Morgana coming in for Gorilla this game. Yeah, against the Thresh, so they want the lane, the counter pick in the lane, and it will be Ooh. a top scion from Smeb. So where is the or, NAR going then? I think no, that's it's a, a jungle, jungle scion. scion. Yeah. It is, it is yep. actually. Okay, well, Jungle Scion was very strong at one point. Uh, you can get some good... Oh, yes. Ganks down with the E. What are we going to see Marin take up in that top lane? Will it be the Singe? I think the Rumble's a good pick here. Yep, and they're going to lock it in. Wow, very strong team fight from SK Telecom. Yeah, actually lower damage than GE's... A, I think a little bit in the late game though, because you have that Urgot, very, very tanky. True. They're going to still be able to fight around those early dragons well with the Rumble compared to the Gnar in the top side. Yep. And Marn, of course, frequently a target of Rumble bans, known as one of, has historically been known as one of the best Rumble players in Korea. And Nunu slipping all the way through picks and bans that game as well. Well, it's because Lee decided to go for this jungle scion pickup. And the advantage is the scaling is absolutely insane. Uh, Scion just gets so incredibly tanky come the late game that champions like Cassiopeia will have a hard time. And the fact that they have Scion and Sivir and Nar means they've got some really good initiation as well. Yeah. Well, this is going to be Tom's greatest test yet. I don't know if he has a whole ton of practice against the jungle Scion. I'm happy to see Lee break something else out. He won. Uh, on the Cinderhulk patch with a jungle window and played quite well, so. Yeah. Makes some of the earlier picks all the more surprising. We'll see if uh, this game goes different than last time we saw the Azir Cassiopeia matchup in game number one. And it's crazy to think, too, that the first pick, Nar, comes in in this match after yeah. seeing how SKT and CJ played on the same patch a week ago. All right, well, here we go, guys. Is this the last game of the night? Is this the moment where SKT 3-0s and takes the championship?
Let's get in the game and find out. Welcome to game three of the finals, GE Tigers versus SK Telecom. Happy to be here, casting for you, and the GE Tigers will uh, not want to go down in history at the team that went to IEM and failed, the team that got to the finals and failed after Rough. such a great season. <laughs> this is not the legacy for their first season that they wanted. I mean, to be fair to the GE Tigers, if as far as first seasons go for teams, they're doing pretty well. Remember that even Faker's team didn't manage to make it to the finals in their first season, SK Telecom K, back in the day. Yeah. Had to settle for third place instead. So GE came out strong, but it's possible that they're a team that was very hurt by this Cinderhulk patch, and that's kind of what we're seeing. But he's going to mix it up this game. And the nice thing about Jungle Scion is you can get crazy lane ganks in. Yeah, that is true. And when you have some hard CC, in the top and bottom side here. There's a possibility of setting those up. See, I believe in Bang Zergot now. It hey, it's impact. It's impact. What do you know? Welcome back. He's like, I remember what it was like to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was on that stage <laughs> once. <laughs> Seeing next to Baker, Faker's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> world we live in well bang you know uh, early advantage just by picking the giant enemy crab got skin I mean that's been something that's been overlooked so far in the series so no XP going over though to bang and wolf yep. see that push starting right here and Prey's gonna be much more relevant so a lot of this is going to depend on Marin's teleports in order to control these dragons and fortunately for SK Telecom Marin's teleports have been very good tonight. yes they so, have really been on point in that way. On top of that, they've been able to draw out Smeb's teleports at very inopportune times, too. Yeah, but the early advantage, Orgot does take some time to get some combat stats, starting with that tier, of course, so there is a bit of a penalty in terms of the ramp right there, so. Yep. Can they take advantage of it? That's the question. And we'll Gorilla see. just checking right now on that side of the map. Taking a look, not going to find any camp, so we'll know approximately where Tom is right now. Should be in a second buff. A good bit of information gained by GE Tigers there. Yeah, Tom starting on the opposite side as well uh, from Marin so that he's up there in case anything happens because that's where you want to gank early is the rumble when he's vulnerable in lane. You want to play back and really open him up for some possible ganking. Pretty much. We'll see how this matchup goes this time for Easy Hoon. I mean, in the first game they played of the night, we had that same matchup, and Easy Hoon did just fine. Stayed safe in lane, farmed up, made a big difference late. So, both junglers back and picking up items. Pink ward for Lee, as opposed to green for Tom. The only difference that we're seeing so far, Lee not opting to switch for a lens early on in this game. Okay. I've just got a feeling this is going to be one of our more passive openings here. Nice poke on the gorilla from Bank. Yeah, they, they definitely have a nice lane matchup here for themselves. Lee is walking down right now. One point into each of his skills so far. Yeah, and no vision for SKT. He's just going to come right in here. Tom's there, though, going for the crab, and yeah. here we go. Tom coming from behind. Bang takes a ride out on the land. Nice by the dark find. Finding anyway, there's a stun. Great CC on the bang, and there's first blood going to Lee. What a gank. Where's that been all night? And, uh, Sion actually can gank early, yes, and can. you can see right there, especially when he can follow up on CC because it gets his charge to the right place, and he's able to do something with it. Tom now... Looking after Lee here in the top side. Gorilla is in the river to back him up as Wolf backs off. And there's another first blood for GE. Yep, they had first blood in game one, but it didn't work out for him. But look at the difference this time. Lee is making plays on the bottom side of the map. That, I think, is a pretty big difference here. Yeah, finally starting to adapt. Finally starting to change things up a little bit. 
It's worked okay in the first five minutes. We'll see if it can last another uh, 30 or 40. <laughs> Fair enough. Still a long, long way to go in this one, though. Yep. I don't think SKT is too worried about that. A couple of tears, but that's not. Oh, to worry wow. About. That ward is so well placed, hmm. actually, to be just out of range of the pink ward, so they know exactly where Lee and Gorilla are. You can see Easy Hoon interesting ward. backing well off after that fact. And they're very safe. They'll get some vision. Three pink wards already around the dragon. And not going to be able to go for it quite yet, one would think. Easy Hoon finds Kuro. Doesn't know that Lee and Grill are still there. He can suspect, however. Yeah. He can suspect. That's a great ward. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember that one. The GE Tiger's really not taking any chances around the dragon this game. Right by himself on the bottom side. Wolf looking into his jungle right now. There's the ping onto the dragon. They have a ward in the river right there. So Lee's movements have been noticed. And in the meantime, Tom is just ripping through Lee's jungle in the top side, taking farming his heart out. Yeah, Marin has managed to push up this top lane pretty well as well. Tom's right. played very well so far this series. Ooh, are we going to see a dive here? Looks like they want to try it. Marin getting in position here. It's about six. This will be hard. Yeah, Tom backing off already. He They're doesn't not have six yet. It. it would be really, I think, pretty difficult to get that one. One of those little opportunities where you hang up for a moment and say, you know, do I have a chance to do this? And Tom decides not to that time. Gorilla's Morgana is on point with those vines. Now, can they turn this into a dragon? They're going to try. Tom is top. Now, they know Tom isn't in the bottom side jungle at all due to their wards. So this should be a pretty er easy first dragon for GE. Yep. Kuro and this is exactly well. what they needed to do to turn this one around. I'm, I'm really happy to see their adaptation here. Yep. Nothing really SKT can do. Oh, Dark finally on the bank. He came a bit too far forward. They're going to jump onto him, taking him out in the land room, though. And they've actually chased him away from Dragon. What is this? Emperor's Divide used. They grab Kuro. He's going to cleanse it immediately. Bang, dodging the stun from Lee. And SKT chases GE away from Dragon. Wow. No teleports coming in, interestingly, from the top side, even though Smeb got a bit of an edge yeah. in terms of HP, had the Meganar form and his ultimate available. Kuro actually gets the Scuttle Crab right there. Not bad. Oh, so no dragon taken by either team at the end of all of that. SKT, I can't believe they were ab able to actually push G off of that. I wonder what he's going to do right here. Uh, perhaps die. Yeah, yeah. he's just going to die. The right. thing is, you keep buffs through death right now. Yeah. So it actually isn't too bad just to do this. It's kind of a, a quick trip back home, actually. Quicker than recalling. Yeah, especially if mean, his death timer was nothing at that time. So. Yeah. Yeah, you really don't lose anything. That's actually the proper decision, funnily enough, right there. <laughs> yeah. He's got his bomb, his Cinder now, so getting closer to that Cinder Hulk. Champ. Tom's at six. Lee's still working on it again. 12 CS behind. Tom's been focusing on that counter jungling, not committing to these ganks or these dragons. And GE wasn't able to pick that one up because they decided to flash and turn onto Bang when the Lantern was still available. Probably should have just tried to finish the, the dragon. That wouldn't have been bad. All right, blue buff over to Kuro now. Still no level six for Lee, though. Yep. He's maxing his Q first. All right, Easy Hoon has got plenty of time to catch up in CS now, and he's kept up all game long despite that poke from his ear. Still another solid lane. I just wonder now, I mean, it really, these games really do see me. Whoa, flash off on a Kuro. Easy Hoon going in. He pops the Ignite. Is it enough? Easy Hoon. Whoa, did he get him? The poison ticking. He no! got him. He doesn't get the shield from the turret. And the kill goes to Easy Hoon. Who is this guy? And, and what man. have you done with Easy Hoon? Easy Hoon. I can't even believe it. Running the Ignite, first off, very surprising yeah. for Easy Hoon as a player to do. And second off, actually pulling off these all-ins just barely. Here we go, topside matchup, Marin and Smeb. Yeah, equalizer goes down, Smeb taking a lot of damage. Curl comes back from the afterlife. But in the meantime, SKT takes that first dragon. Absolutely amazing to see Easy Hoon trying to make plays like that. Really, really surprising. And we didn't see anything close to that. We've seen the Azir Cassiopeia matchup all night. Yeah. And Kuro played the Azir in game one, but wasn't that 
all-in kill potential coming in from Easy Hoon. Whoa. That is amazing. All right, let's watch this again. Kuro's at full HP right here, and he has blue buff. Yeah. Easy Hoon just gets behind the Sand Soldiers, uses that Ignite. Kuro tries to get away, well, he uses his Flash, and then the last hit of the Miasma right there actually gets the kill. Uh -oh. And meanwhile, Kuro Flash onto him. The smite will slow him down long enough. Tom will pick up that kill. Would have been nice to give that one over to Easy Hoon, but Tom will be perfectly fine with that one. And now things getting a little bit grim for Kuro in the mid lane. Well, they still, I think, have a late game advantage here, but well, not for SK long. Telecom. SK Telecom keeps doing this. Yeah, that dragon that they managed to pick up, and then this turret going down imminently will be causing a lot of problems. And Kuro, you know, he decided to go for the Morello Namicon this game instead of the Chalice, and that's that's actually really a big difference in terms of his magic resist. Not having the Chalice there has allowed some of these kills. Now, can they get uh -oh. something in response Here for it? We go. There is no ult on Tom. Is Lee going to ult? Waiting, waiting. Cyan is hilarious. Is wow, he bang and wolf, wolf and bang playing back it very off. safe. They know what yeah. the threat is here. Those lane ganks from Jungle Cyan are pretty ridiculous. Yep. And instead, they saw Prey and Gorilla playing pretty far up in front of the minion wave right there, and they started to get a wee bit suspicious. Oh, here we go. Wolf over the wall on the Gorilla. He's going to bring Van Gogh over the lantern. Lee pops that ult, goes in. Oh, right through Wolf on the bang. Wolf died just in time for GE. And this is going to potentially be a double. It will be. Lee picks up that kill. Now Tom on his own. 1v3. He's trying desperately to get away. Looks like he'll make it out barely. And Kuro couldn't pick up an assist right there. And instead, yep. Lee and Gorilla actually... Oh man, the kills are just not going into the right spots on GE. And Marin had his TP. That was a risky play from GE because Marin had his TP up a few seconds before Smed, but they managed to get the kills so that Marin couldn't respond. Right. Close. Very close, though. Well, that was uh, good timing on the kill on Wolf as well, too, because otherwise uh, Lee would have been able to get back in on the bank. Yeah, and they were they were playing around the cooldown on Tom's ult right there, too. So. They knew that they could win the even matchup should it unfold. Well, GE's certainly not out of this one yet. They've tied up the gold. They've tied up the kills. They're at, they're doing much better than they were oh, the yeah. last two games. Now, that isn't saying a whole lot, to be brutally honest. But at the very least, they're even in gold, and they're even in kills. That is brutally honest, Monte Cristo. Hmm. Does make SKT perhaps a bit nervous. Luckily for them, there was no dragon to be taken during that fight. Yeah, no turret they could get either. Yep. So SKT just warding around the pit now. And Tom just trying to get a bit more counter jungling in. Oh, this is, is risky. So risky. Well, Lee hang out and try, so it looks like it's gonna work out. Yeah, recall from Lee now. They just have no idea where Tom is. No, wow. they don't. I mean they didn't. They didn't have wards in that part of the jungle, and they knew that Azir had gone back, but the possibility that Lee is there and collapses with his bottom lane is makes it a bit dangerous. But that's that's kind of what we've come to expect from Tom, is he does take risks, more so than a lot of other junglers. It seems like they pay off quite a bit, though, for this guy. Yeah, he, but when they don't, done. you get huh. CJ versus SKT games one and two. Yeah, that is true. Well... You want to win the season of champions, you got to take some risks. <laughs> Fair enough. He's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Uh, Meanwhile. Smeb is going to help Kuro take the blue buff. So they're playing both sides of the jungle simultaneously. That tower he saved up in the top side, though. Yep. Smeb not really missing much in terms of ZS. He is behind in farm at the moment, though. It seems like in Korea we've seen the NAR kind of dominate this NAR Rumble matchup, but yep. not this time. Marin, tons of damage onto Smeb before he decides to back away. Marin again going with the early home guards. He's I been doing this all night, very unusual, but I think it's really working for SKT because they're playing around these dragons and these early teleport fights so well. Well, Rumble, I it mean. It really justifies it. Rumble doesn't need a lot of items, too, to do a lot of damage, and that equalizer in dragon fights is really, really big, too. 
Plus, I, I think the hope is that if you can force your opponent out of lane, you can get back faster and maybe actually come up with a teleport advantage in that situation as well. That makes sense. Under the right conditions, that's certainly a possibility. Oh, Bangs is going to go ahead and take the Gromp himself, it looks like. Dragon up in 30 seconds. I think it's better hope he doesn't take too much damage from this. Looks like he won't. Well, is starting to recall right now. Yep. A little bit late to set up vision around this. Tom already there. Yeah, a few wards for uh, for uh, GE near Still Dragon. Still no get out. Infinity Edge for Prey coming into this fight. It would yep. have been much more preferable to recall under these circumstances, but they're not going to have that luxury. Amarin's going to go back right now, it looks like. Back into the jungle where no one's going to stop his teleport if they need him. Rilla just keeping an eye on River. It looks like they do have the Rift Scuttler, at least. Amarin's going after the Krugs right now. I guess so, yeah. Checking the brush with the W. Not actually going to lens out any of these brushes, at least at the moment. Hmm. Just taking a look around, seeing what's going on in that mid lane. Well, so enough far information the to make an actual play right here. And now yeah. they've allowed SK Telecom to push this mini wave up to their tower. So SKT may have a small window, even though Prey does have that excellent wave clear on Simmer. Well, Dragons have not gone GE's way yet today. They've had them stolen away. They've just been forced out. They've lost team fights. You can understand the hesitancy coming into this one. Tom looks like he's getting ready to zone out Kuro if he needs to. Maybe not. Gorilla keeps checking. They don't have that Rift Scuttler anymore. But what it's doing is it really is delaying all of GE's recalls for items. Yeah. Well, Marin's a bit low up in top side, but Smeb took a turret hit or two as well, so he's not looking the greatest. Marin can Ray just go ahead and recall. has so much money. He needs to go back and spend before this team fight. It looks like they're going to. Okay, so everyone going back and buying now. SKT is going to get back to the Dragon a little bit sooner, though. If they choose to. Lots of recalls from GE. That, that's a bit risky. IE done for uh, Prey now. Oh, they recalled three players actually out of that. Doesn't look Four. like SKT may have an opportunity to take advantage of that, though. Well, oh, they could start Dragon right now. They do. They may not take it, but... Oh. Is it just because they don't have any vision in the other jungle? They just don't know where people are? Man, I think that they could have actually taken the Dragon right there. You saw how saw many recalls went down. Yeah. So they gave GE a time to actually use the money that they've collected. And that's going to be a pretty big deal, considering Prey got the Berserker Greaves and the Infinity Edge off of that. Well, oh, nice poking on the gorilla there, actually. As it is, SKT still has good vision around the Dragon Pit, but just not a lot in the enemy bottom jungle. They're going to make an attempt right now, at the very least. I think they're going to. Yep, Tom going in. Lane gank might be coming in here. Yeah. Late. I think it's quite possible. Dragon being taken by SKT. What's going to happen? Hero, or Kuro rather, gets a ward over the wall. He gets a sand soldier in there. Can they take this dragon? No, Tom smites it away. Kuro was like, well, easy. You made it look easy last game. And I'll, Prey I'll gets super chunked somehow in all of that. Yeah, it must it's have like been one of the acid just, hunters. Yeah, and yeah. Bang coming back in the lane with that long range and now the armor penetration able to make it work. Well, another clean dragon for SKT. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. Well, Gold's still pretty even, though. If you're a GE fan, it definitely isn't as bad as the last two games. There's only two dragons instead of three at 19 yeah. minutes into the game. So there still is a comeback potential here from GE, obviously with the gold being so even. Uh, that, that still is a, a big possibility. Could be. Oh, he's even in a little bit of trouble. Whoa, Emperor's Divide. I don't know about that. That was a bit surprising. Very odd. Huh. Especially considering the Abyssal Scepter is done. Burrow just doesn't have the items or the burst yet in order to make the plays here. I mean, that almost looked like he misclicked Flash or something and didn't Flash. I don't know. Well, he's trying to save his tower is what he's trying to do, but it's just not going to work. But now the blue buff is going to be taken by Marin. He just waltzes into the enemy jungle. Why not? And takes it. He's got vision. He can do it. Little, little advantages. Oh, he's going to find Smeb coming back up there. He doesn't really want to find Smeb. <laughs> not really, no. But there's the turret going down. That's first turret of the game. Oh, Marin taking Marin actually damage. has to flash. Yep, he yeah, does. Overheated right there, so there wasn't much he could do. 
Well, they got the mid lane turret. He got the blue buff. So burning a flash for that, not the worst thing in the world. GE lead. Oh, oh, alt used. Flash for Easy Hoon. He wants to take out Kuro again. Sand Soldier right there, though. That's a little bit deep to go, Easy Hoon. Dodges the Sand Soldiers. There's the AoE coming in, though, from Gorilla. Easy Hoon's going to turn on to him now. Oh, he missed the bind. Uh oh. This is dangerous. Grab that lantern, buddy. There we go. Easy Hoon. So aggressive tonight. Oh, I'm kidding. Actually, really committing to that one with the flash. Didn't use his ignite. Yeah. And Kuro had to. Cleanse out of the Cassiopeia ultimate. And crucially, he didn't need to use his flash, though. Easy Hoon coming away with a very large CS advantage yep. uh, to contrast with the one in the bot side from Prey and Gorilla. Yep. He's got his Seraph's Embrace done already as well. Haunted Guy's done from R and really taking a little bit of everything for his early items. Face of this game is still fine for GE. Their bottom turret's very healthy. Uh, they have tower damage advantage in bottom and top. So if they can take down uh, these outer turrets, they'll find themselves in a gold lead. And then they can start scaling into this late game where this Rumble, not sure he's gonna be able to actually cut through the combination. Oh, here we go, Tom. A bunch of super tanks and a black shield. That nice. will be very difficult. It's gonna be tough. Thanks, getting a little bit of armor pen with that brutalizer now, anyway. And yeah, Morgana just an excellent pick against all this crowd control as well. Yep. Gives you a lot of opportunities, and there you go. Back to there we go, right there. Wow. There's the gold lead we were talking about after chipping those turrets. Yep. So GE, they've got to make a play around this next dragon, though. Looks like they want to take the last outer turret if they can, and uh, doesn't look like there's a lot of defense for SKD. Well, everyone grouping up now, but uh, that's a lot of damage. They're going to pull me underneath it. Tom comes in. There's the box as well. They catch three. Nice all time to Kuro as well, keeping him on the fight for the moment. Smith teleports down. Wolf still on the outside. Easy doing a lot of damage. Gets that kill on to Lee. Lee chasing him back under turret, though. That Scion does a lot of damage after he's dead. Meanwhile, Prey in trouble. There's the Acid Hunter. A flash. Bang gets the kill. He's going to go after Gorilla as well. Gorilla flashes away. Dark Binding Dodge. Meanwhile, Smeb manages to take out Tom. It's a bit of a bloodbath, but there's the Equalizer forcing Kuro to flash out of that one. They can't do anything to Smeb either. He's about to turn into Megadar. They take out an Azir turret in the mid lane. That's still plenty of time left. So at one for two, GE overcommitting to trying to kill that tower in the mid lane gets caught out of position for a bunch of chain CC from Cassiopeia and from Sejuani. Had to be very careful about how you siege those towers because they ended up taking a huge amount of damage. And the other thing, too, is Smeb used his port for that. Marin's was down, but Marin got into the fight in the end anyway, and now SKT will have TP advantage for this upcoming dragon. Yes, they will in one minute. We'll see if SKT can take their third dragon in a row. Easy chilling out on tormented soil. All right, let's watch this fight again. He Great hook from Wolf, but I mean, that's a really, really risky decision in terms of tower. And they go too far forward. Bang uh, actually finds these. He prayed and spell shield the ult right there instead, spell shielded afterwards. So yeah. he gets flashed on, and then. Well, Bang also dodged multiple dark bindings throughout the course of that fight, too. He's a pretty nimble Urgot. Bang's been very good at dodging skill shots recently. Yes, he has. And that turret looks like Whoa, it will be has, safe for the moment. Bang just went back and got frozen hard with some of that money. That's hugely wow. problematic to Prey, who has no armor penetration yet. 1,400 gold also on Kuro in the mid lane. He's got to go back and shop, but he only has 10 seconds. Easy has got that Void Staff as well, too, and that is going to be a bit of a problem for GE Tigers as well. A lot of damage coming in from this Cassie here right now. GE really wants to get this turret. Really want to get this dragon. Ah, oh, yeah, that too. Lawrence there, he's got TP. Yep, uh, we're going to see that teleport come in. 
Here we go, Dark Binding on the top. He's going to try to do a Dragon Mango. There's Equalizer coming in. Who's going to get it? Lee manages to take the Dragon, but now the fight has begun. Glantris net for the moment. Kuro comes in. Nice out on the Prey and Kuro. They're going to get low. Tom comes up. A double kill for Easy Hoon. So SKT loses the Dragon, but they're going to take this team fight. Bang, doing so much damage. Goodbye, Smep. Can Marn make it out? There's the Zonius. He'll live. And Lee, oh, Tom comes over the wall and stuns him just before his stun happens. And that is going to be a big team fight win for SKT. They lost the Dragon. Doesn't matter. They're already up two to one. Getting those four kills helps so much. And the question is now, can they take the Baron? Bang might be able can. to actually tank this, given his current state. And they're just going to try for it. Of course, they have the Cassiopeia, who does so much damage to this Baron. Yeah, Burrow's still there. He's low. Yeah, the management is looking pretty good oh, as far as the damage goes. A risky SK. move for SKT. Curl trying to do some they damage. No spike. Tom gets killed by the Baron. Bang, tanking it. Oh boy, this was maybe not the best idea. Kuro comes in. Cassiopeia gets the Baron anyway. They're gonna turn around on it. Two kills. So in the end, Easy Hoon, Bang, and Wolf walk away with the Baron and a kill onto Kuro. Yeah, with Smev's teleport being down, that was probably the right call. Still risky, and they do pay for it just a little bit. Barely pulls it off, though. They're up to a 3K gold lead. Looks like they're gonna need to give up this mid turret, though. And they're behind the turrets by quite a bit at this point, down three to one. Yeah, Prey still not getting closer to really any kind of armor penetration either. Had to go for the Vamp Scepter just to keep himself autoing and topped up in some of these team fights. Now Muramana done now for Bang as well too, so. At this point in the game, comparatively, he will be doing a pretty decent amount of damage. All right, Void Staff also done for Easy Hoon. This is, Easy Hoon is absolutely enormous right now. He's the big, big problem yep. for the GE Tigers, and they still are working their way towards an Aegis of the Legion, but it's not yet done. Yeah, I mean, lock it done, though, for Tom, and I mean, he's gotten quite a few items as well. Has that Glacial Shroud as well. SKT, if they can win a couple more team fights here, they might be able to just push out ahead. Oh, enough anyway. GE has very good turtling with this is here. Yeah, they do. They can wait quite a long time in this game before they have to give up much. And GE continuing just to push forward right here, even under the barren power of SKT. Well, that's the question, you know, can SKT stop this lane pressure from the GE Tigers well, so far? The issue is, is that Marin doesn't have the barren buff, so they can't just put him in a lane and have by himself and have the minions sort of take over the siege duties. It's actually very important that he died during that fight so that they can't split push with the Baron as effectively as they could have otherwise. Here we go. Sends up, banging a little bit of trouble. Smeb in there trying to knock him down. Nice lantern. Tom dodges it as well, too. Uh -oh. And Lee could be in a little bit of trouble. Manages to dodge the, dodge the knockup from Tom. And now SKT chasing. Nice all time to Garo. They lock him down. Equalizer comes in. There's Box Wolf in a little bit of trouble. But here comes Marin. Bang uses that positional cursor to get in. On to Bray. Here comes Easy Hoon. There's a stun, though, for Lee. Easy Hoon could be in trouble. Get Slow, Smeb in the back lines can take it out. That's another double for Easy Hoon. And you do not need this Cassiopeia to get any bigger, and it's not going to be done yet. They're going after Lee, they're going after that bottom turret. They get the flash, and they'll turn. Just wow. a big overcommitment right there. Yep. GE was controlling the tempo and the pressure in this game, and then they decide to go for a very greedy kill on the bank. Who the hell is going to kill Bang? Bray doesn't have any armor penetration against a frozen heart. Very unlikely that that gank works without Kuro there, and they still commit to it. And even then, Lee misses the ultimate. That makes him be way too far up the lane, and then there's just no follow-up. Yep, well, the follow-up is SKT taking two of your turrets Oh man, evening it up. That that was seven thousand gold lead. Now. GE just had to wait that Baron out, you know. And Ooh. there's the it was a great lantern to be fair. But yeah, yeah, really. uh, as we look at the follow-up, they continue to walk forward just to try and save. They blow the Sivir ult early, so it's not available for most of the team fight. Prey will shield the Sejuani ult, and then that means that there's no more spell shield for Bang's ultimate to come in. Easy Hoon gets there first, and he is so fed at this point that he could just walk straight through this Seraph's embrace. And we saw actually Kuro do a good job of staying at max range to avoid the Cassiopeia ult actually, but oh, it didn't matter in the end. And there's wow. another tower going down. That's three turrets out of that SKT's gotten now. They've jumped up to an 8,000 gold lead, oh, about 7,000 actually. GE just needed to play a little bit slower in this game, run out that Baron timer, and then 
continue to play around the dragons, and it yeah. just didn't happen. Got really, really greedy for that gank, and oh, without well. Azir able to be there, and that's that's one of the problems that I've had with the GE Tigers and their losses is that they sometimes commit to ganks when that have a very low likelihood of success. Yeah. It seems like it, when they get nervous, they have a real severe symptom of desperation that crops yes. into their decision making. Yes, they do. I absolutely agree with you. It certainly has not served them at all in the finals. SKT looking pretty good here in game number three, though. Still and no last whisper for Prey either. He wound yeah. bang. He's got not his. He's going to be able to poke right now, too. Man, and if SKT actually wins this game, wins the finals 3 0 with Tom and Easy Hoon in, what does that mean for MSI? Holy cow, these guys are going to be a terror to deal with. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Easy Hoon has been playing extremely well tonight. Yep. Well, here comes the dragon. SKT's just going to take that one pretty easily. Very quickly as well. There's nothing GE can even do to contest this. Dragon number three for SK Telecom now. Smeb just trying to split push. Yeah. And that's, what, that's where the fight they wanted, right? Just farm up, get the last whisper, and then fight on your item power spike. Something that GE generally, generally does very well. I mean, batch, they, I think they just oh, oh, lost oh. their heads a little bit. You know, the thing is, too, is I feel like we are seeing another problem with the GE Tigers, is that in big matches, these guys do seem to crumble a bit. It seems like this is a team that has a really hard time handling the pressure of being on the big stage. Yeah. We saw it in Poland. We're seeing it now. It's really too bad, too, because this team is very good. But not tonight. <laughs> And not on Cinder Hulk. Nope, so. not on this path. SK Telecom. All they need to do is play this one out methodically, and they will have a 3-0. Tom gets dark finding this. You know what's fun? You know what's funny though is actually most. Yeah, this is the the ninth Champions Final. Yeah. That has taken place in Korea, and most of those are three zeros. It's yeah. actually we only have had two. Uh, we've had three three-two finals actually. Usually summer finals are where the close ones are. Spring is where the stops are. <laughs> hey, last spring it was 3-1 to Samsung Crew. You know, imagine White Shield oh. picked up a game in that Oh, one. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They some The other team won one game. Yeah. That is what I expected tonight. I, but this is... It has to be I, said that more often than not, we have a 3-0 yep. Champions Final. Well, the weather's ne getting nice. You know, people want to get outside and <laughs> experience nature a little bit as well. So, you know, play League of Legends, play great, make it, make it a little bit quicker. You know, some of this rift, rift is very natural. Virtual nature counts as nature, right, Noah? Yeah, I think so. What kind of postmodern mentality do you want to subscribe to in this broadcast? Is virtual nature nature? Uh, it depends on if you're sitting in one of those theater seats that, like, sprays water in your face and, like, shakes you around and stuff. Maybe more realistic than others. Are. What if you're in the holodeck? Well, then something inevitably just tries to kill you. <laughs> should never go in the holiday. That's a terrible idea. They should just really decommission that thing immediately. <laughs> Tom, the only one really not concerned about dodging dark findings this game. <laughs> well, Baron is up again, and SKT wants it. And they've got the vision. They can certainly bait it as much as they want. Yeah, the fact that Kuro... Uh-oh. Oh. Well, Tom takes a bit of damage from those sand soldiers. The, the problem in this game is that Kuro fell behind early, which put Prey's, Prey had to carry because of the CS lead that he had the bottom side. Yep. But now there are two frozen hearts, so he can't even do that. And Kuro, Kuro is a full core item down. So what do you do? You probably just lose this game at this point. It's certainly looking that way, isn't it? Well, we were thinking it'd be a quicker series. It's, I mean, what has really blown me away today is how aggressive and successfully aggressive Easy Hoon has been. And then Tom coming in, the big stage, the grand finals. We've seen him have issues with nerves before in some of their earlier matches, but playing so methodically, so calmly today. Yeah, he's been great. That's very true. Yeah. And Tom is we, really we saw, something else. We saw that he adapted his jungle play in this particular game as well. Yeah. Not 
not playing so much to the bottom side when he saw Lee there. And Tom has just been, his entire strategy is to play where Lee isn't. Well, if there's anything that SKP's shown, it's the ability to cultivate new talent as they take another very easy Baron. And Roman's like, yep, yep, I'm getting ready to hoist a big check. <laughs> SKT. In your face, no pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's oh, bad at pick man. band now? Irelia Picker. <laughs> Seriously, dude, jeez. Those Irelia picks are going to haunt Smeb and the rest of the GE Tigers for a long time over this offseason. As they watch the midseason invitational from, uh, from their team house. Another turret. Bull goes down by SKT. They want the inhibitor now. They've got the Baron to take it with. 30 until that next dragon. It may not even matter if they win team fight right here. And will we see SKT 3-0 the GE Tigers with Tom and Easy Hoon in the in the booth here? Will we see SKT win a finals without Faker? <laughs> it's it's a bit bittersweet because it's great to see these players performing, but I miss Faker. I mean, we'll see him at MSI. I, I guarantee that. Easy Hoon has been really good. He's been, this has been the best series I think Easy Hoon has ever played. Uh, just in terms of his aggression, looking yeah. like a very different player. And going from, I mean, going from very distinct styles too to have having two players that, you know, really are the total package too. SK Telecom just so stacked for talent yeah. right now. And I think SKT is really benefiting in this game from the fact that this is a great patch for Easy Hit. It yeah. really is a really good patch nope. for Easy <laughs> There's Becky. Becky's it's like, like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm getting money for doing nothing. Yep. <laughs> like, wonder what the weather in China is like this time of year. <laughs> And Pickaboo on the bench as well, too, of course. I uh, think to sit a lot of time out recently with some wrist issues, but getting better, I've been told. So hopefully we'll see him again in the future. Sounds like we will. And SK Telecom, they control the jungle, they control all the lanes, they control all the objectives. They can take this fourth dragon if they want to. And they can end this game. It would take a colossal error on their part to uh, give GE a foothold back into this thing. That's a shame, too, because GE really did have a lot going for them at the start of this game. And they did. But the decision making from SK Telecom, and they're insanely good dragon control in the course of this series. It's led to the oh, Marin. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? Ah, uh, yes, the Fnatic Rush. Yep. The doom of many a split pusher. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Black Cleaver for Bang now. Baker's like, oh, I'm gonna go play solo. <laughs> He's already packed from Florida, I bet. And what else do you say? I mean, at this point, things are looking pretty wrapped up for SK Telecom. It's kind of a victory lap now, unless they, you know, filter one by one into the Fnatic Rush again. But it would take a very large mistake and yeah. probably several of them from SK Telecom. Well, you have to think about it at this point too that even if they lost a big team fight, you know, the lanes are so pushed. Yeah. The vision is so good. Would GE even be able to get anything out of it? Yeah, they're on the cusp of a fifth dragon as well. Yeah. So, it's yeah. Um, pretty, much, pretty much all but over. Seems that way. We've seen some crazy comebacks on champions in the past, but I don't think we will today. There are some leads that just a little bit too too difficult to overcome. You know, yep. if this was a gold situation like we're seeing right now, but GE had the four dragons, then maybe they could come back. I mean, we saw SK Telecom do that last week. Yeah. Uh, up against CJ Entis. An incredible game number four. But you have to have some sort of objective pressure, and there just is absolutely none. Yeah. Oh, Luton Zeko. Yeah, why not? Who, a lot of AP. Who needs a Zonia's Hourglass, Stoa? You don't right. need cleanse. You don't need Zonia's Hourglass. That's, that's a bit brave. You're not. It? You're not worried about a Nar on your face. You're not worried about a Scion running through, CCing you indefinitely. You're not worried about uh, things like you know dark bindings and follow up damage. It's a bit. It's a bit overly bold. It's a. Easy. It's a bold move. Yeah. But hey, overly bold is uh, Ben Easy Hoon's. Uh, Methodology in the series, apparently. <laughs> yep, that's something I never thought I'd say about Easy Hoon. Yeah. The aggressive mid laner, Easy Hoon. What, what, 
What world taking, is this? Taking risks, diving turrets, and yeah. invading his enemy's jungle solo to pick up kills. You know, being amazed by that is also forgiving the fact that we're seeing a finals with Prey and Smeb in it. Hey, Prey has won champions. I know, but I but that was a long. That was 2013, man. That was like the first month of 2013. Prey did had a very good year in 2013 in general. It's been over two years since Prey's been to a final. Smeb is, of course, the big story here. You know, I mean, kind of a, a bit of a joke among the top players in Korea, but really having a fantastic season. And, you know, despite the disappointments at IEM and, and apparently here in the finals tonight, too, you really can't take away from the fact that GE has had a, a really awesome season for their you know, first time together as a team. Yeah, and they're... While they have a lot of veteran players playing together in a best of five with their current coach and their current infrastructure is a very new experience. Yeah. SKT needs to make a, I feel like they need to start making some moves here. You know, at what point? No, they don't. They just have to wait for Barrett and Dragon. Okay, never mind. <laughs> they don't need to make any moves. They don't have very good siege is the problem you're dealing with SKT. Why this game is going so long, in spite of this massive gold lead, is that SKT has really bad siege. Is there they a have point, no, though? They have no range. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's huge. Takes the lantern out. Is there a point, though, where the gold lead doesn't matter and the items are just so good on both sides that suddenly the late game gets good again for GE? But you don't want to take risks. You have to dive right now to close this game, and so you want to have the Dragon or the Baron. Uh, they have, what, three melee champions, an Urgot, the lowest AD <laughs> carry range in the game, yep. and a Cassiopeia, not exactly known for her long-range ability, so yep. really hard to siege. Not so exactly. they, they have to play around Dragon and Baron. They don't have any other choice. And they're also dealing with insane wave clear and, and from Azir and Simmer. What are you going to do here? Just It's, it's going to be a long game. It's going to be a long one-sided game. Yep. Well, GE, do they have an opportunity here? No, doesn't quite look like an SKT backing off methodically. Baron is up, dragging up in a minute 20, and either objective SKT will be absolutely happy to have. Really, it's about it's about GE preventing this dragon. Yeah. Oh, that may help. No follow-up, though. Because if we get to the six-item point, the power will shift back into GE's favor, I believe. Right. But... It's about... We're a ways away from that. Yeah, they, you have to defend against both Dragon and Baron right here. It's extremely difficult. Well, Malk now Oh, Wolf gets caught! And he's in big trouble now, Bang. Are we going to see something happen here? They're turning around. Wolf very low. Equalizer comes out. Looks pretty good. They get Wolf. Bang does some damage. The fight's a bit split up, though. SKT, I think they need to back off of this one a little bit. Oh, they're chasing, though. The damage from Bang certainly adding up. Easy who got dark binding, though. There's a flash. Position reverse around to Prey. That may not have been wise. Tom comes into the big off, though. Can SKT turn it around? A double kill for Easy who says they may be able to. Marin looking for opportunities. Prey still looking good. A double kill still for easy Hoon. Tom manages to get something done. Big knockup with Emperor's Divide. There's Azonius. It's not going to say Mart. Triple Quadra. kill now for Kuro. No. Will it be? A Quadra. Tom trying to escape. Kuro still looking for that chance. Can he get it? Binding. Dark binding, and that's an ace. ace. GE Tigers win the fight. They found the pick they needed, but can wow. they take an objective off of it? Well, that's the thing. They're so pushed back. What do you do with this? All right, they have to take Dragon. They absolutely must take Dragon right here. Can Kuro and Gorilla do it by themselves, though? Yes. I would imagine they can, but... Okay, so let's check this out. So the pick happens. They get Wolf immediately. There's the Sivir ult. Prey's on the outside, just trying to help Sven pick it up. Lee actually finishes it off with his ultimate, and Kuro does a great job of zoning. At this point, they're not even fighting 5v5, right? They're yeah. only fighting about 5v2 or 5v3 at a time, thanks to their zoning. Now, Bang's going to ult. Prey has to flash to get out of it. They try and CC Bang. Pretty good says Wani ult right there, but it only hits the tank, so the damage is still rolling. Tom does a great job of zoning out Prey, but Kuro gets in a choke point while Scion's uh, passive is helping out with some of that damage. And then a great Emperor's Divide. Marin just has nowhere to go right now, does get taken out. Tom barely surviving up until he gets hit by the bind from the Boots of Mobility Gorilla catching up with him. But GE took 
the absolute right fight. They never had to fight more than two or three of SKT at one time over the course of that, yeah. thanks to good kiting and the fact that Kuro managed to get himself in that corridor. There was so a... they get a dragon, and now it's a real long shot to win this game, but this is how well, they have to do it. They're going for this Baron now, and can SKT do anything about it? I don't know if they're going wow. to. They're coming in, they get the Baron too. Teleport coming down, SKT. I don't know if they want to fight this, we will see. Marin comes in anyway. Does he have the equalizer? He does. GE -E backs off though. Bought themselves a new lease on oh, life. Bang could be in trouble. The Sons of CC. Oh, it comes out. Bang is taking out Gorilla in a little bit of trouble. Easy. Who turns around with the elf? Didn't do a lot with that Marin ultimate either. GE -E chasing us down the midline. These bindings from Gorilla have been so big this series. This is certainly going to be another objective or two. And GE -E finding the moments. And SKT, I gotta say, not taking the fights they should take. No, and in fact, SKT, if Wolf was going to die right there, just let him die. Yeah. Let them have the dragon and come back on the Baron. You don't need to commit to that, but they fell right into the kiting of GE, and all of a sudden, GE actually shockingly turning this one around. Yeah, it really, I mean, like we said, it would have had to take not just one, but multiple bad fights from SKT, and that's exactly what GE got. Oh, easy, who nearly blown up by Kuro there. Neb over the wall, and yeah, with easy and chunked out, they're gonna have to give up this inhibitor. And GE, they are not quite done yet. And the problem against oh. GE is that SKT has very they're gonna low try to end. wave clear. I guess they're, they're gonna try risky. to end. No, they Ooh, should not boy. do this. Yeah, I don't know. They're gonna turn it around now. They're dark binding on Amarin. Gorilla, Gorilla. single-handedly turning this one around with his skill shots. Gorilla setting up the first blood this game and then getting pick after pick after pick. He's been the major reason why GE and some of these team fights has been able to just isolate somebody and kill them so easily. Yeah. Now, SKT, their issue is, is that their only real wave clear is Equalizer and Cassiopeia, and that presents enormous problems against GE when they can zone you out so effectively with Azir, uh, with the boomerang blade, and just with Lee standing there, walking up to the turret and threatening with the Q. So, very difficult, and this is all of a sudden maybe actually going in GE. They may have just bought themselves enough time with that inhibitor kill. This is why GE is a very dangerous team, because they find ways to win. Well, they're so good at playing from behind. You know, we've seen it all season long, and. I mean, geez, there were 10,000 gold behind at this game. They were down four dragons yep. to one. I mean, but and this is this is the price you pay sometimes when you pick a team that doesn't have good siege, like we yeah. saw from SKT. It means that you don't have a lot of ways to win the game. You can't just siege the turret. Uh, you have to play around the dragons, and if that goes wrong, it it could go really wrong. But it certainly, still has. very surprising that SKT gave up both dragon and baron and an inhibitor, so a lot of mistakes from SK Telecom. Yeah, really kind of choking a bit in this third game. Maybe the pressure finally getting to uh, some of these. You see who has GA right now as well, so. Yep. Damage down, but they know they really need to survive if they're going to win the team fight. Baron done now for GE. Dragon up in a minute 30. If SK Telecom can take can take this fifth dragon, they can secure this one. But the team fight's gonna be tough. The gold lead really doesn't make a difference now. No, no it doesn't. We've gotten to that point in the game. GE has managed to last long enough for their gold lead to be a lot less relevant. Wow. Kuro's on this late game is here. There's a banner on Lee. Huh. If they can get another Baron, we know what the GE Tigers can do with Banner. There is literally no way for SKT to clear out Banner minions. They will just get their side lane, their, their inhibitors crushed. So it's all about that Baron. Now they can also play with that Baron and some of the minion waves on the side and try and put pressure on the opposite side of the map. But they're just waiting for this Dragon. They cannot allow SKT to have Dragon number five. Yep. 45 seconds from now, the real end of this game is probably going to happen. One way or the other. A fifth dragon and a win for SKT or a lost team fight and a win for GE. Well, it's not too much of a timer yet for SK Telecom. They don't necessarily have to fight this dragon. They've got it's pretty only, good wave clear. It's only going to be number three. It's not really knocking on the door yet. And they could wait for a more opportune time, such as the inhibitor being back up. Nice is here turret right there, so they just want to make sure that the minions aren't going to push back out. Good timing. 
makes sense. Yeah, with Dragon up in about five. That'll make it annoying for SKT. They're just going to go ahead and oh, ignore that. A little bit, oh, that split binding. right now. That's a bit yeah. risky for them to be playing around the Dragon like this. Prey. Ooh, not going to get seen walking through that wow, choke. He got go. really lucky coming through that one. Smab just trying and to build his rage. Yep. And the SKT is in a very bad position because they are stuck in a choke right now against Azir. Yeah. So you can see right here, not really a good way for them to get into the river. They blew their opportunity. Now the speed trying. Oh, Tom going deep to get that ward down. Wow. Oh, you. That was brave. <laughs> Needed that vision. Death sentence does not connect. Bang looking for an opportunity. There's Meganar. Tom goes in, throws the ult, praise spell shields it. Equalizer comes out. Huge ult from Tom though. Can easy you do enough damage? There's the box emperor's divide. Huge dragon very low. Gorilla low as well. Kills coming in for SKT. Lee, Prey in a little bit of trouble here. Bang still looking good. Gets the position reverse rough. Wolf with the kill as well too. And SKT, they've killed Kuro. They've killed Gorilla. Meanwhile, they have Prey's to go home to defend to their base. Prey wants to end it. Can he do it, though? Well, they're trying to get this. Right, Lee is there. He's going to have to flash over the wall. Oh, boy. Easy. Oh, taking a lot of damage from Bang. They can't afford to lose him now. There's no more super minions, however, and Easy Hoon will intercept the minion wave. Uh, SKT, they get that fifth dragon for four out of their five members, too. That is huge. Yeah, so Prey just... Uh, trying to heal up right now. He's probably not going to make it out oh, of this geez. alive. Yeah, yeah, they're corralling him in there. Meanwhile, the fight between the jungle and the top lane of Prey. Taking a lot of damage from Ezeun. Ezeun getting low. There's a GA pop. Wolf with the play. Wolf getting bloodthirsty in the mid lane. <laughs> and Sion oh. can't quite make it in time. Ah, uh, Prey in a lot of trouble now. The death timers are really long. And there's and a big, big minion wave that they yeah. can just push right through. I think so. And with this fifth dragon. 15 seconds Kuro. And even though Tom's ult was spell shielded and didn't do anything in that last fight, yeah. SKT still manages to push through and win. Oh, man. But this they've got is the it. fifth dragon is huge. They can take down buildings so quickly. They certainly can. Curls back up. He is the last hope for the GE Tigers. They made a bit of a comeback, but it may all end right here. A 3-0 for SK Telecom as they push into the base with this fifth dragon. Bang coming up. Kuro and Gorilla trying to delay long enough for Prey to come back. Snap joins as well. I don't know if they can end right here. They're going to try. Easy Maybe a little trouble. There's Equalizer. Ever's Divide goes down. Marin gets that kill onto the support. A double kill for Marin. And now it will end. Snap getting low. Wolf still up. And there it is. The first Nexus turret down. The second Nexus turret down. A triple kill for Marin. And SKT with Tom with Ezeun takes the 3-0. GG, we'll see you at the Invitational. Very good stuff. And SK Telecom really playing with fire in that last game, but they made it count. They finally got that fifth dragon and were able just to push it through. GE Tigers showing once again how dangerous they can be from behind, but they're skirmishing, just not up to the task of getting those early leads up against SKT. Now, what a huge statement for this team going to Florida next week. They're like, we don't even need to use our main roster to win our season finals. What is this SK Telecom team? Wow. Amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Easy Hoon, Tom. The whole team, what a bunch of heroes. A 3-0, I never would have believed it. Wow, incredible stuff. Very dominant performance, and I would be scared if I was the rest of the world that this team could win in Korea without even playing Faker. No kidding. No kidding. And I mean, you can say, you know, GE Tigers are having trouble with the patch, but, you know, we saw the type of comebacks they were capable of making. And you really got to think back to that game one and two. Those Aurelia picks really seemed to sink them. And if the top lane had gone a bit differently, I wonder if we would have seen a much longer, much closer series. Yeah, I think that that might be true. I don't agree with GE's strategies coming into the first couple of matches. And yeah. Especially, game one is kind of whatever, but... Right, Moving right. into game two and trying to repeat that one more time really looked like SKT knew exactly what was coming and played around it quite well. Yeah, I mean, the other part of it as well, too, is that Lee, you know, I feel like we did see him still continue to struggle on, on post 5.5, but, you know, it wasn't that bad. He did a little bit better, but overall, I think GE's got a lot of, a lot of work to do in the offseason. Yeah, they do, but 